Yeah. So hi everyone. Good afternoon. I am Sunita Kumari from Cold Spring Harbor Lab. And thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to talk about our DOE funded system biology knowledge base project. It is called KBase. And we plan to have multiple tasks, uh, talks targeting KBase in future in this meeting. So today I am planning to focus on KBase overview. So let me start with KBase team. So KBase has a diverse team of over 50 people across five collaborating labs. And you can see most of them here in this photo. And these five labs are Buckley Lab, uh, Argon, Oak Ridge, Brookhaven, and Cold Spring Harbor. Our PI, Adam Arkins, is actually uh, from uh, Buckley National Lab. So Buckley Lab is actually the hub of developmental activities with strong supporting pillars from other four labs. And actually, CSHL leads the plant science efforts in KBase. So what is KBase? So KBase is a knowledge creation and discovery environment designed for both biologists and bioinformaticians. It is an open software and data science platform to address uh, grand challenges of system biology, mainly in predicting and designing the biological functions in microbes, plants, and microbial communities. Unique thing of KBase is that it provides a unified system where users can integrate their data, tools, and their analytics into one unified scalable environment so that users do not need to access them from numerous sources in order to perform uh, you know, system biology analysis. So KBase also provides a collaborative computational environment for sharing methods and results and placing those results in the context of knowledge in the field. So KBase makes bioinformatics really easy. Uh, by providing seamless integration of analytical tools to enable a range of scientific workflows. Anal analytical tools in KBase actually are called as apps, and there are over 300 KBase apps. Those cover five main research areas, which are genome assembly, genome annotation, comparative genomics, and these three all are actually microbial centric, and there are two more, RNA-seq and expression analysis and metabolic modeling. So RNA-seq and metabolic modeling apps actually are, uh, can be used by uh, plants, microbes, and fungal genomes. So KBase allows users to import their own sequencing reads, assembly, genomes, plant transcripts, media, and then flux balance analysis models, phenotype sets, and expression matrices for analysis. Here you can see on this left side that there are two different workflows express an analysis and metabolic modeling workflows in KBase. So these workflows are created in narrative interface with built-in application tools. So here, basically, I would like to make emphasis here on underlying powerful data model. That helps in the seamless integration of the different data types with the diverse data set. So here you can see that genome and expression these are the objects, these are data model. This can be integrated into different workflows. And this is making it really powerful. I will explain more in, uh, later on in most different slides about the different applications and the power of the platform. So KBase actually is really uh, easy. You use KBase, you don't need any special software or any installation. It is accessible from web browser. All you need to do is you need to become a registered KBase user by opening a KBase account. You can sign up uh, with any one of these uh, using either your Google account or if you have Orchid ID or Globus account. So regarding data, so as a registered KBase user, you have immediate access to thousands of public plant, fungal, and microbial data set. Those are accessible within KBase or you can upload your own data. KBase periodically imports all this data from many publicly accessible databases. Some of those key data sources, like you know, these are NCBI, RefSeq, Phytogeome, JGI, Grameen, Seed for Models, Go for Ontology, CAG, 
RAST, and Uniprot. So for the reference genomes, KBS imports around 120,000 microbial genomes from NCBI RFC, plant genomes you know, around 78 from JGI phytogenome, and 134 fungal genomes from JGI mycogosia. So the most important thing is again, integration. So KBS has in internal representation of genomes and their annotations metagenomes, expression, and metabolic models. And these are called as data types. So this integration is benefit, benefited from KBase on data model, which links the diverse data and allow the comparisons between the data types and interoperability with tools. So these are the several data types that you can see here. That KBase supports this, all these variety of data types for interoperability across various KBase tools. So on top of the data, and built-in applications, KBase provides user access to a variety of open source analytical tools that cover a very broad spectrum of scientific use cases related to genomics, metagenomics, comparative analysis, omics, network analysis, and modeling. So this allows to combine all of these analysis tools in one environment in narrative interface. So once you have signed into KBase, you will be taken to your dashboard. And from the dashboard, okay, there's some background noise. Okay, from the dashboard, you can open your existing narratives, access others that have been shared with you, and you can create new narratives. So these narratives can be accessed at narrative.kbase.us. If you are a new user, your dashboard will be mostly empty since we have not created any narrative yet, but you can explore the public narratives. And you can also browse your, uh, your and other favorite applications and methods. In addition you know, to that on dashboard, you also get uh, some sort of metrics like uh, on the narrative stats on your own narrative or the shared narratives and how many narratives are shared with your collaborators. So KBase narrative interface, so this is really powerful. So from dashboard, when you can create a new narrative or you can explore the public narrative. So KBase provides a user-friendly narrative interface. So narratives in KBase capture computational experiments in dynamic interactive documents and that promote the collaboration and reproducibility of the scientific results. So here is the publicly available rna -seq narrative tutorial that is created by me. And uh, here you can see this, the narrative title and author, and here is like, you know, the data panel. So once you created the new narrative, when you, these are the different narrative interface, I'm just going to show you how. So if you can click on this button, it will go to the, you can add the data inside your narrative. Either you can add uh, your public reference genomes or public data, or you can import your own private data, and all the data will go to this data panel. And here the application panel will show you all the applications here under different categories and these are collapsed. So once you will click on it, it will expand. And this is the main panel for work. So, so here, you know, um, narratives can include uh, images, uh, notes and commentary. So using this markdown cell button and uh, because uh, narratives, you know, they are built using the Jupyter notebook. So user can also write custom scripts to interact with the data and tools contained within each narrative. And you can always share your narrative. Uh, you know, if you, if you would like to keep it private, you can keep it private, you can share with colleagues and collaborators, or you can also make it public for the benefit of the research community if, you, if your data is already published. Okay. So how is KBase different? So now I have discussed the kind of science that we support in KBase and strength of platform. So I would just would like to summarize how all of this makes KBase different. As I mentioned earlier, users can upload their own data, integrate with the reference data, and all is supported by this powerful data model. We also allow users to bring third-party tools. Then we have a user-friendly narrative interface and when users can easily drag and drop the tools and they can develop their workflows. So all of, the, all of those, these functionalities is supported by this high performance compute. And again, you can also do collaboration here and it is open source. 
So this part of my talk so far, I have focused on science and platform in KBase. Now I would like to focus on our community oriented efforts for knowledge engine. This is our main vision. Though knowledge engine is still in prototype, it is not, we are not still there, but what are the, what, what is the schematics here? So I would like to explain here. So here in this schematic figure, you can see KBase is an extensible system for users to bring their data and tools together with others for analysis of function in microbes, plants, and their communities. And obviously it should be in an environmental context. And then underlying data model is actually the powerful model that supports the collaborative analytics and integration of all data and analysis that supports the automatic linkage of the related information to the relation engine or the knowledge engine for knowledge generation. So again, this is still under prototype right now, but once this relation engine or knowledge engine is available, it will enable users to run queries to get the inference of uh, you know, quality and behavior through meta-analysis. So overall goal of data through integration to knowledge sharing is actually to enable predictive biology research to help uh, to design microbes, plants, and their communities for DOE biofuel objectives. And again, I would like to make an emphasis here that we also support user working group as teams and also making their materials fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And I will explain it how. So I, here you can see in KBase and JGI. So our KBase and team has a very strong tie with JGI. And these both programs actually are DOE sponsored and they are under the same program management. So there is a synergistic relationship with, uh, between JGI and KBase. Uh, obviously plant and fungal genomes, reference genome data set in KBase, they are also imported from JGI. And besides providing the reference data set, JGI collaborators are also the power users. And they also provide code resources for certain capabilities, uh, like for to new tools for building fungal models and also adding high quality of JGI data products. So this can be integrated into users analysis and drive new insights. And you might have also seen, you know, uh, at different meetings and workshops at PAG and SPB, we always have KBase JGI booth and uh, KBase JGI workshops together. So in addition to that, actually, um, KBase also provides uh, JGI search. Uh, so in this KBase, you know, if you click on this, there are two, uh, two tabs. One is uh, by using the KBase user data, genome features, reference data search. Another one is a JGI search. So here users can quickly and easily transfer high throughput sequencing data from the JGI genome portal to KBase for analysis. So um, yeah, so in addition to JGI, DOE has funded five science focus areas among the national labs uh, to encourage collaboration with KBase uh, especially to make their data and tools available in the, to the broader community via using KBase. So the research effort of these uh, SFAs actually, uh, they support the mission of the Office of Biological and Environmental Research. And currently KBase has ongoing collaborations with these five of these SFAs. Uh, you can get the detailed summary of these SFAs from this link. Actually, these all our fives are mainly focused on microbials and bacteria, virus, uh, genomes, um, but we also have user working groups. And uh, these user working groups, uh, especially CSHL has uh, uh, this functional genomics user working group. Uh, this is in collaboration with the JBay, JGI, and Brookhaven National Lab. And we are also working with EBI and JGI group to get Atlas Compendium as part of functional genomics user working group. So KBS actually encourages third party developers as part of UWG and to facilitate this thing, KBS provides a software development training to the external developers to wrap their open source tools into KBS as apps. So KBS orgs. So to support external collaborators, KBS orgs actually provide a powerful mechanism to support their data and analysis through narratives among their colleagues. So all the members in that one particular organization, they can view the list of the narratives associated with that org. 
So it can work like as a Dropbox, where you can share your own private data and public data with all members. And you know, most important thing is this, that OGS enable users to team collaboration globally. So this is really collaborative effort, where you can build organization, where you can share research your project uh, with your team members. And you also get notification for updates in your organizations and narratives. So this is another good way that how these orgs and their associated narratives, they allow users to do pioneering analysis with their diverse data set. It allows them to compare methods, combining analysis and integrating across different data types. So any user, you know, they can use the system in many different ways and unexpected ways. So here in this graph, you can see, this is a community graph plot of app usage chain. So nodes are apps and these edges, you know, these exist if they are used sequentially. So the colors represent the cluster of apps that are used together the most, and this can be involved in stereotyped workflow, or it can be alternative methods that users can compare and contrast. So this shows the power that users have to explore their own path through the system, comparing and contrasting methods by integrating different types of data. And you know, remember that anything that users run, the route that user takes is also captured in KBase on narrative by prominence. And then it is also, you know, user can also describe that in his narrative and this can be shared with others. So it's really very uh, powerful way of sharing uh, your research work. So KBase publications. So once you are done analyzing and interpreting your scientific results, you can prepare publication, ready scientific manuscript in narrative. And publications are actually um, steadily increasing in KBase. In this graph, you can see the number of publications. They are gradually increasing since 2014. Uh, 2019 is not over yet, but we are still having more than 35 papers. And uh, the, these papers have either mentioned KBase or they have cited KBase in their methods. And our KBase main paper, uh, this is, was published last year in Nature Biotechnology. And this KBase publication was cited in top 5% of all research outputs scored by Artmetric. Okay, so this is the future of publication. Uh, sorry, publications. Future of publications is reproducible research. And KBase empowers researchers to reproduce published results through narrative interface. As you see here in this published paper by Chris Henry, users can click on the narrative URL to get access to complete narrative. Then users can copy this narrative and run the analysis. So these narratives are actually active papers where you can develop your scientific hypothesis, you can develop your experiment plan, and you can analyze and interpret your data with built-in computational applications. So you can make your research reproducible, accessible, and reusable. Okay, so now how you can engage, engage with KBase. So the KBase team presents, you know, at uh, you know, generally we go to different uh, conferences and conduct workshop for end user and developers. And you can get all that information at, on this uh, calendar of events to find out when and where this will be. KBase also offers various types of uh, tutorials, training material at kbase.us site. In addition to that, if you have any questions, you have, if you run it, you find bugs and you want to suggest new features, you can always use the KBase help board. And if you would like to work with KBase as UWG, a user working group, uh, you are always, uh, you know, welcome. Uh, you can set up a convenient time to speak with us. And then, uh, and definitely we would encourage, uh, you know, our collaborators and developers. And then we also provide SDK training to new developer and also provide webinars and workshop, uh, which are targeting particular scientific problems. So, and if you would like to host a KBase workshop at your organization, you can always, uh, you know, contact us and we will be very happy to help you. Yeah. Thank you.